What's up everybody, Beastly Gamer here, welcome to the channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about PlayStation Experience 2015, the first day has just concluded, all the big news has been given out, and a lot of people are really upset about this. Personally, I wasn't too super excited about what I saw at PSX this year, um, and at the end of the, uh, the conference, I looked over at my wife and I said, that sucked. To be honest, that's what I felt like. I felt like the, the conference really sucked. I think they got off to a really good start. They showed uh, some new Uncharted uh, gameplay, and they showed that Uncharted 4 has branching dialogue options, kind of like Mass Effect or a game like that, like it has an RPG type of element where you're able to express yourself in the way that you see fit. It really started off really well with that, and then they went immediately to Final Fantasy 7, and they showed uh, actual Final Fantasy 7 gameplay that made my jaw drop, eyes water. I was extremely excited about that. And then from that point on, it kind of dropped off the mark. I was really let down, uh, I would say in particular by the VR sections of the conference. When they showed that, I understand too, I understand it, that you can't really convey on a screen the experience of a VR game. And the games that they showed look really dated, really old, kind of terrible, clunky, uh, big massive polygons sticking out everywhere, and it just wasn't as beautiful as what we're used to. And I, I was trying to explain to my wife that these games probably are much more entertaining and enjoyable once you put that, that PlayStation VR headset on. But I'm going to go through some of the news that they went through today and give you guys my opinion of the show. Nino Kuni 2 was announced today. That was a PlayStation exclusive, uh, and it looked really good. It looks like a step forward. I didn't see the Studio Ghibli uh, introduction at all, so I don't know how much they're going to be involved with it. But of course, uh, Nino Kuni is a very, very great game. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Destiny is going to be getting Sparrow Racing Mode, uh, which is basically a new social gathering that allows you to get on your Sparrow and race other Guardians on Mars and Venus. So that looked pretty cool. Uh, Bastion, the Bit Trip series, Nuclear Throne, all these games are coming to PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4 today. So these games are available now. Ratchet and Clank, they showed some new gameplay and uh, some new cutscenes on how Ratchet and Clank actually met. It looked really good. I like some of the new weapons that are in this game, and that game looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, so I'm actually looking forward to that. They showed MLB uh, 16, which looks really great. Of course, it's what we kind of come to expect. This annual series always looks great. They showed Yakuza 0 for PS4, which looks like it's moving in the right direction. I love the Yakuza series. I didn't play the last one, but uh, this looks like it's above and beyond what we've, we've been used to in the seventh generation. So Yakuza 0 coming to PS4. They did announce that Hitman Go is going to be coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita, which is uh, actually really good news. I got to say one thing. I'm really, really excited and very proud of the fact that Sony seems to be backing the, the PlayStation Vita. They still, they still seem to be supporting the Vita. Uh, a lot of people are really down on it and, and, and have been saying that the Vita is all but dead. But uh, the PSX conference that they showed today, a lot of these games are coming to Vita and that makes me feel really, really good. Full Throttle Remastered was announced. It's coming to PlayStation 4 and Vita. They showed a new cast member on the Battleborn MOBA uh, and the beta for PS4 will be coming soon. And uh, the new member is like this penguin in this giant mech suit. It was cute. It was funny. I don't know how much I'm going to play that game. I've never really played a MOBA. It might be the best thing ever. It might be something I hate. So I can't really say until I actually play it. Capcom revealed Street Fighter V's final launch character, a guy named Fang, who kind of reminds me of the two uh, ninja warriors in uh, Kung Fu Hustle who had the hats on and they played like the big guitar. He looks like that. He looks really awesome. Uh, and of course, Street Fighter is one of my favorite fighting games, so I'm looking forward to that. During the Final Fantasy VII trailer they showed today, they did showcase a lot of voice acting. Some of it sounded good, some of it sounded okay. Uh, but for the most part, everything that they showed for Final Fantasy today really uh, was awe-inspiring. I think everybody who saw the initial reveal trailer at uh, E3, when they saw this one, it was just more icing on the cake. I'm really surprised at how good the game looks, especially when they show Cloud uh, kind of jumping from the game and going into what appeared to be like a cutscene. It was kind of seamless. And then the very last frame they showed was Cloud turning around. He looks so damn good. It just really blew my mind. I screamed again at the end of that. Ninja Theory revealed a new game called Neo. And uh, this was actually a really welcome surprise. If you like games like the Souls series or Bloodborne, this game looks like it's in that same ilk. It's one of those type of games, but it's set in a samurai world. It seemed really slow and lethargic, well-paced. 
you know, strafing out of the way, counterattacking. It looked very brutal, very bloody, and I was really happy to see that. Black Ops 3 is getting its first DLC, and it's um, a 30-day exclusive DLC for PlayStation 4, so uh, people who are super excited about Call of Duty look forward to that. Kind of the same deal that happened with Microsoft for the last few years. And also, Final Fantasy 7, the PC port is available for PlayStation 4 right now. So it's $15 if you go to the PSN and you buy it right now, but it's like $10.50 if you have PlayStation Plus, which a huge majority of people have. I'm actually downloading it right now. Looking forward to playing that. Now, the part of the conference that kind of lost me, and it's understandable that it did, and I'm sure that most people who uh, who work at Sony have been really debating how, how best to convey the uh, amazing thing that is VR, because it's really hard to show it on a screen. First, they showed like a live demo of these two guys on the, on the stage, uh, kind of throwing things at one another. One of the gentlemen, his VR kind of malfunctioned and his arm never spawned, so it didn't work from jump. But it was understandable for me for them to try to do that, but ultimately it was a fail. Some other VR stuff that they announced today was Ace Combat 7. Uh, and Ace Combat's a super old series. It came out back on PlayStation 1 first came out. That's going to be VR. 100-foot robot golf, which looked like it could be crazy fun. You're a giant robot, and you're basically destroying the city playing golf. You're 100 feet tall. Res is a VR game coming to Sony PlayStation VR. Um, and there's a new Psychonauts game that's going to be coming to PlayStation VR, as well as the previously announced Psychonauts 2. So pretty much in a nutshell, that is the PlayStation Experience Conference. The things that I did not like about this conference is that we did not see any first-party developers take the stage and tell us what they've been working on. Uh, these developers have been working on games for many, many years, and of course we know there's games like God of War that are in development that we want to hear something about, right? But we didn't hear anything. A majority of this conference was PlayStation VR, uh, PlayStation Vita, a bunch of remakes, of course, and some games we already know about, like uh, Uncharted 4 and Final Fantasy 7. This is how I feel about PlayStation's conference, okay? I think this conference is probably their worst conference of the year because they had already showed everything all year. Here's a great synopsis. I just watched, I, I marathon watched Jessica Jones on, on Netflix, which is Marvel's newest series alongside Daredevil. And it was an incredibly good show. I couldn't stop watching it. I watched it from beginning to end, me and my wife, over the course of three days. Now, if I had to wait every week to see each episode, that show wouldn't have meant nearly as much to me because by the time I got to the end of the series, I wouldn't have remembered the beginning. I probably would have forgot some of the stuff that happened in the middle. And that's what happened with PlayStation Experience this year. PSX has been overshadowed by all the other conferences throughout the year. Keep in mind, there's E3, there's Gamescom, there's Paris Games Week, there's Tokyo Game Show. All these other conferences go on throughout the year, and PlayStation has been at virtually all of them. I think they skipped Gamescom. But they've been at virtually all of them, and they try to bring out something new every time. And so when you take into account all the stuff they've shown throughout the year, this conference does look kind of lackluster, and it's understandable. My suggestion for Sony would be to maybe back out of two. Two every year, and maybe do three per year, because they got a lot of people who are constantly playing PlayStation, looking forward to PlayStation, wanting to hear more. And my main main critique for Sony this year at PSX is to get these first party developers out there. People need to know what they're talking about. We need to know what they're making. We need to know what games they're working on, and find a way, a better way to convey Sony uh, PlayStation VR. That PlayStation VR, the demos that they showed just didn't look good. They didn't look too fun. Uh, it's really hard to convey that on a flat screen, but what I saw, what my wife saw, we weren't really interested or excited about PlayStation VR after seeing them. That's my uh, thoughts on PlayStation Experience 2015. I thought that it was a decent showing, definitely wasn't my favorite, probably the worst of all their conferences all year. You guys let me know in the comment section, what do you think about PSX 2015? What were some of your best moments? What were some of your worst moments? What do you think they didn't do that they could have done to make things better? I, my thoughts are they should have had developers out there talking about their games that they're working on. We don't have any first party games on PS4 and I think the first party developers need to say something to let the gamers know that they're working on these games so people can be excited. I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. If you did, give a thumbs up and show support of the channel. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'm the Beastly Gamer and I'll see you guys next time.